this was probably a reward for the end of the day, was to be able to sit and spin. I've heard some uh, demonstrators say that <coughs> when, there, w when the woman in, in colonial times was churning butter, she enjoyed churning butter so much because she got to sit. Otherwise, she was up doing physical hard labor. Nothing is tense about spinning. It's very relaxing. It's a very old, old folk art. Um, this is the only way, you know, the pioneers and early Americans, early settlers had to make their clothing. They didn't have, you know, Walmart and Kmart and all that fun stuff. This is the the thread of life, I think. I think the thread that, that keeps us connected. The th you know, yes, I think it's fascinating because we're still wearing clothing that's been woven. It's just not done by hand. I think sometimes we've forgotten how hard it was to get what we have now. I used to sit on a dog trot there a long time ago, and there would be um, fiddlers come and they'd play those songs, and um, then there were pe pe people coming up and they'd remember. You could see in their faces when they were children, they remembered carding for their grannies yeah. or the, someone who sat on the porch. They didn't learn the skill. So we're just we're just one or two generations away from a colonial, you know, skill that was. Um, yeah. An essential part of, of building this country. My great grandmother would have had the children doing this card for her. Uh, they probably would have sat in the evenings. That's when she would sit down and uh, do things that didn't require light. And, you know, you could spend in the dark practically. And uh, so they would sit, that's, what they, that's when she would do it, is, uh, sitting in front of the fire or whatever. Wool uh, spins best when it's warm, uh, particularly if you can't get all the grease out. So um, yeah, it kind of flows out of your hand a little better when it's warm. It takes seven hours spinning to uh, support one hour's weaving. Most of the parts of this loom are 18th century. The beater bar swings from this top bar. And that's what beats each yarn into your warp as you weave. This only has what's called four harnesses. But with four harnesses and four treadles where I put my feet, there are many, many patterns, many variations of patterns. And we're just about to run out of weft. And this instrument found its way into the Appalachian Mountains and really made a home here in Galax, just you know, 15 miles away, has a real history of its own style of lap dulcimer building and playing. Just a little bit. With the lap dulcimer too, it's grown tremendously over the last 20 or 30 years so that as well as that traditional style of playing, a lot of players are exploring more of the fretboard and more chromatic options with the instrument so that you can uh, really do. different styles of things with the, the lap dulcimer as well.
back when my great great whatever grandfather moved here in 1820 there was a blacksmith in every community there was a mill in every community and um, a lot of people were good woodworkers by nature so uh, but a wheelwright somebody to make the wheel of this thing and to make the spindle uh, you, ha you really had to have a blacksmith to make the spindle uh, so it was and the axle of the wheel all the rest of its wood you have today uh, people who have um, really carried on those traditions from a time when their families um, were really living self-sufficiently and had to produce things for themselves and used everything that they had um, because you didn't waste anything. And so that's where you get um, some of these wonderful traditions of quilting and spinning and weaving and, uh, and, and woodworking um, because they didn't have much, but what they had they used and they created some not only useful things, but beautiful things. It extends it down. Makes it smoother. It is from the past. It's what our forefathers, it's how they, how they existed, what they did, and how they made uh, their containers. You got plastic containers, you got cardboard, you got uh, all the different conveyances for your product that, that they didn't have back in the 18th century. Or it, so to, to continue that tradition and that craft on, I think needs to be done for no other reason than people for the history, for the knowledge.